So I'll just wish once again. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Testament Survey, BC 103. Today, we would be studying on the epistle of Paul, the apostle to Titus. Even before we could begin with our session, can I request Zeli to lead us in prayer, please? Okay, sure, Pastor. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you so much for this time that you have blessed us so that we can get together and learn from your word, Lord, as we uh, ponder upon the book of Titus. Lord, you bless our pastor, give her the grace, the strength, the wisdom to teach us according to your will. And also, Lord, help each one of us so that we can understand it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We commit our life, our time into your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. So the book of Titus is a pastoral epistle. And it is also known as the book of ministry of character. So Apostle Paul wrote this letter to Titus. His true son, just like Timothy, approximately 62 to 66 AD. So, can I know the purpose of this letter? Anyone from the class? What was the purpose of this letter? This letter is very short. Yes, brother, please go ahead. I think the the purpose, just like we see in Titus, it, in 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 Second Timothy, it was to change the leaders uh, in Ephesus. But this one, it was. was to elect new leaders. There were new leaders in Crete, basically. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lubega. Yes, in this uh, chapter, we see, uh, in this book, we see three chapters. And the very purpose um, we see is to guide Titus uh, as he was a Greek believer and uh, in, to build him in the leadership of the church on the island where he was ministering to, on the island of Crete. Uh, so we see the four points in the three chapters, four points, the very purpose of Paul addressing is first is to give a personal authorization. Second, Paul is instructing Titus about faith and conduct. Third, he warns against the opposition from both the false teachers and the sinful nature of men. And the fourth point is to inform Titus about his future plans for him. So these are the four points from this three chapter. And also the theme of this letter is the godly life of the believer. Can I request one of us to turn chapter 2? Book of Titus, chapter 2, 11 to 14, which is the key verse of this letter. Chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Can I request one of us to please read? Titus chapter 2, okay. verse 14. So for uh, 11, us, and he sorry. might redeem us from every lawless deed and pure One form. second. Uh, you can... Sorry, Brother Lubega, <coughs> can, uh, can I request you to please read from chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Okay. Thank you. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us and he might redeem us from every lawless did and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works amen 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. This is the very theme of this whole letter where um, the message of salvation has been given that for the grace of God that brings salvation is appeared to all men, teaching each one of them to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age. So here we see that Paul has been training, uh, uh, training uh, Titus along with him, each of us that as a leader, how our character should be. What are the things that we need to reject and what are the things that we need to hold on to in our life in this verse. And we see verse 13 says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of a great God, Jesus Christ. And verse 14 says, he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people who are zealous for good work. This is how we need to be. We need to be zealous for the good work. So what do we know about the man Titus? Who is Titus? Anyone from the class? So Titus, the background of Titus, okay, let's see the background of Titus and, um, you know, who is he as a person and how does Paul acknowledge him? Titus was a Greek origin and was most likely a convert of the Apostle Paul, perhaps uh, from the home church in Antioch. We see that in chapter 1. So Titus accompanied Paul and Barnabas on their trip to Jerusalem for the council as an example of Gentile fruit. We uh, saw that in the book of Galatians. So here we see that Titus was among Paul's company as a partner and a fellow laborer during the uh, latter part of Paul's third missionary journey. So what happened here? We see that Paul had sent him to the Corinthian church, not only to carry the letter, but also to assist in some of the issues within the church. So what is that is uh, what, what we see here is Paul um, is building him, is raising him to be a leader by opening up an opportunity for Titus in the Corinthian church. He also th uh, taught him uh, with his own life example. And here we see he opened a, a door for a Titus and sent him to minister to the people at Corinth. And we also see another point about Titus is he reported back to Paul on the situation of the church at Corinth. And Titus also carried the letter of 2 Corinthians to the church. And we also see uh, he may have been involved in assisting in the gathering of the finance for the Jerusalem Relief Fund when they were raising. And uh, the um, and also apparently he accompanied Paul after his release from Roman impres imprisonment to Crete, where Paul left him as a pastor at the church in this island. And Paul asked Titus to join him in Nicopolis sometime later. We see that in Titus chapter 3, verse 12, where Titus was with Paul during the second Roman imprisonment for a short while. And with that, uh, yes, I could see somebody's hand been raised. Is there anyone who would like to add or comment or ask any question? No hands raised now. Okay. Or there was a comment. Let me check. Okay, brother. Subhashish network is fluctuating. Okay. I understand, brother. Uh, is it my side? Am I audible to everyone? Okay. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Okay, brother. Uh, we'll pray that your network grows stronger, that you may not miss out on the class today. It is a very interesting book. I know it is a very short letter, but it is very interesting. Okay. So when was this book written? This book uh, had a time frame in Paul's life when he visited the island of Crete. The letter has uh, would have been written sometime between Paul's uh, uh, two Roman imprisonment. So maybe in between that. And it was most likely written toward the middle to the end of this period, uh, uh, placing the letter between 1st Timothy and 2nd Timothy. For this reason, a date was uh, between the 63 to 64 AD. 
So what do we know about the church at Crete? Very important. Uh, even before we could know, I just went and uh, did a research on this place called Crete to know the nature or the culture of people because uh, only when we know the nature or the culture of the people, we'll understand that to, uh, why Paul is instructing Titus to be a man of good character, strong in your character because that your life... Um, the way you lead your life can impact others. Uh, yes, by your teaching, but at the same time, by your lifestyle. He's asking Titus to be a living example in this contact. He's asking him to be a man of good character. Uh, yes, as what we also studied in the initial, uh, uh, during the orientation on the code of honor, something like that. Okay, so here we see uh, Paul encouraging uh, Paul encouraging Titus to be a man of good character. Yes, we see Paul uh, raised his hand. Yes, Paul, please go ahead. Paul, you raised your hand? Just accidental, sorry, sir. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, uh, so let's look at the background of Crete. So the Crete was the fourth largest island of the Mediterranean. And Crete lies directly south of Aegean Sea. So Cretans believed Greek gods uh, were men and women elevated as deity through compassionate service and gifts to mankind. And uh, the theology from, uh, they had a theology which was related below and not from above. So they held that majority of the gods were born on their island, including the chief man become God. Who's that? Zeus. Who, who was, uh, you know, who was buried, they believed that uh, this man who became God was buried on their island. And in their mind, Crete was a central place of worship of gods. So they had a mythology uh, so ingrained, uh, ingrained in Cretan's culture that the church in Paul's days were integrating their understanding of the Christian God had a prevailing view about the Greek gods, mainly Zeus. So this was a bad news, especially in the light of the kind of man become God, uh, that is Zeus, who was. So it's recorded that he loved uh, this Zeus God was uh, to to know about a person who man who became God. What kind of nature that he had, which has impacted the people in that city, was uh, he loved to seduce women by means unnecessary, uh, by means, uh, you know, assuming godlike characteristics to get what he wanted. So he assumed the form of a husband to get a woman into a bed or, you know, some kind of uh, illegal seduc uh, seduction was involved. So in a nutshell, um, Zeus was a liar. He was a womanizer and Cretans immoralized him for this. So they took pride in his shady character and underhanded ways. So through this, we understand what Paul is preparing to deal Titus with. So with that, we see um, some of the points that we could say how the people character was in this island. They were uh, reputed to be liars. They were reputed to be lazy concerning details. Hence, the need for structure was most of the churches of the religion. So they were reputed to be warlike. They were not peaceable among themselves or patient with any of the foreigners or any guests that were coming in for any kind of trade or business visit. They were reputed to be intolerant with outsiders. They were not cosmopolitan in their thinking. And they had this island mentality where they were not open to new ideas or any kind of philosophies. They were very classical slogans describing uh, the, uh, some uh, describing the Cretans, the lit uh, the literature, the uh, in the classic literature. When I was uh, studying about the Crete, it says uh, if there's a say, there used to be a saying, saying uh, a say, there used to be a saying like this to act as a Cretan. So what is that? To act as a Cretan 
means uh, it was equal to be a liar. So this was a saying given uh, for the people in general at Crete. So the people of Crete had an opportunity to change the virtue by the gospel. Here Paul goes with Titus to give the uh, opportunity to the people of Crete to change their self, to change the character. And uh, so what is the central theme of the whole book? We read it, right? To have a strong character. Don't be worldly. Uh, God never created each of us like that. And this is the character that each of us to be, um, to be true to ourselves and to God and to man and to have, um, you know, a, a nature that is peace loving. So he is, uh, he is sharing the things that is the, he is actually imposing the godly character to the people who have never experienced something like that in their nature. So he is trying to impose moral attributes saying as an elder to be blameless. So he is encouraging Timothy. This uh, you need to be blameless. So this does not mean that an elder will not be blamed for things. Leaders get blamed for many things. However, it does not mean that they live a life that is above reproach. So Jesus was blameless. Yet false witnesses blame them of many things. And second point we see what um, Paul is encouraging Titus here is an elder to be temperate. This I'm talking about chapter 3, verse 2. When we turn to Titus chapter 3, verse 2, he's telling, uh, he's encouraging him to be uh, a man of temperate. He must be of temperate, an elder to be sober minded. An elder must be in good behavior. So in Greek, the word called good behavior implies the thought of being orderly and modest so it is closely uh, a link to the word which means adornment the elder must be above reproach in all his activities of behavior right down to the way he dresses and also as an elder should continually uh, yes as he is continually exposed to the public eye and there will always be those who seek to bring reproach to god leaders so we need to watch ourselves so as an elder is not to be given to wine and again he also says as an elder you're not to be given to quick tempered as an elder not to be uh, covetous as an elder you should not be quarrelsome there are some don'ts as well he, again paul is saying not to be self-willed uh, or uh, so pleased with himself that nothing else pleases him and he become he, he comes to please nobody and he also says as an elder you need to be lover of what is good and pleases god and with that we will move on to the some of the domestic qualifications that is as an elder must be the husband of one wife. He also instructs uh, Timothy, you know, how a bishop should be as a leader, as a deacon, how a man should be. And here again in the book of Titus, he is instructing, um, as an elder, you need to be hospitable. As an elder, you need to rule your own house well, having his children in submission, having faithful children not accused of uh, um, any dispensation, uh, dispensation, yeah, and he also uh, goes ahead with some spiritual qualification in this book, uh, which he also says in Timothy chapter 3. Yes, it's first Timothy chapter 3. We see that uh, as an elder is not to be novice or young convert. Uh, as an elder must have a good testimony among those who are outside the church. Um, so some of the qualities as an elder that we need to have is uh, we need to be just, uh, we need to be holy, we need to be patient, uh, we, need to, uh, uh, hold, uh, we need to hold fast and be faithful to the word that has been taught. Um, along with that, he also instructs Titus, that leadership is a gift. Leadership is a gift. And it takes more than good character and a good family to make a good leader. So 
how an elder must be able to teach you need to be teachable at the same time an elder must be able to exhort and convince in sound doctrine so these are some things that paul is encouraged timothy and now he is also encouraging titus with that so what are uh, the unique features that we see in this book in this letter we see that paul emphasizes on the good works Titus two eleven to fourteen we read, and also in chapter three four to seven we see that Paul is emphasizing on good works. Good works are very important. Uh, so when we read, when we read through chapter three verse four to seven, it says, "But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of holy spirit whom he poured out on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior that having been justified by his grace we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life this is a faithful saying and these things i want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in god should be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable to men very important we saying hold on to the good works so what we see false ministers are void of good works true ministers like titus are to be a pattern are to be an example for good work so god's people were set apart to be zealous of good works we also see that all believers are to be ready to do good works and here is also encouraging them that all believers are to be careful to maintain that good work with them because the the temptation is high we may tend to do wrong things but then we need to maintain good work uh, uh, we also see that paul is emphasizing on the example of the minister of christ we need to be like christ we need to uh, be an example like how christ lived on this earth and the practical instruction to each ages or the social groups in the church um Uh, he's addressing everyone to the old men to the old women and young men and young women and to the servants so there's a guidelines for treatment of heretics and other problem people had uh he is giving and in the final message in chapter 3 we see that he is saying when i sent artemis to you or tychicus be diligent to come to me at nicopolis for i have decided to spend the winter there send zenus the lawyer and apollos and their journey with haste that they may lack nothing and let our people also learn to maintain good work to meet urgent needs and they may not be unfruitful here we see that paul is encouraging titus uh, along with others as they're coming to meet he is encouraging let the people learn he's asking titus teach them let them learn to maintain the good work maintain very important to maintain it it is just not one time but to maintain and to meet the urgent needs urgent needs whatever was urgent meet their need and that they may be fruitful so that is teaching uh, in giving there is a blessing and the other areas living a holy life it pleases god and many other areas how a good man or a good leader should live and there we also see a farewell the last verse uh, from chapter 3 all who are with me greet you greet those who love us in faith grace be with you all amen very um, graceful ending that paul is writing to titus and he is encouraging Uh, Titus to be a good leader. So not only Titus, we also see how we encouraged, how we built the leaders like Timothy and Titus. He just didn't uh, uh, be an example to them, but he allowed them to grow in the leadership. He saw them grow. Like he opened up opportunities. He went along with them to each place. He planted a church, and he gave that church in the young leader's hand. 
made them grow yes they would have made lot of mistakes but then that did not stop uh, paul from uh, telling uh, uh, timothy to stop leading the church but then here we see uh, you know uh, paul encouraged timothy and titus even though when we studied the book of timothy we saw timothy being a very timid a uh, very fearful uh, because the people in the church were much older to him and they were looking down on him and even for him to uh, minister or to lead the people he was having he was facing difficult he had lot of challenges in the church as a young leader but then we see how paul being a leader encouraged timothy and now we saw how he encouraged titus as well so these are the young leaders into whose hand paul is uh, giving them a church uh, to pioneer to start to lead to uh, nurture and grow and he's backing them up is uh, you know uh, no matter what mistake they would have done or they would have faced or uh, um, you know no matter i'm sure uh, because of the cretans lifestyle they would have faced lot of challenges and i'm sure even the cretans would have written many letters to paul or complaining on titus or even timothy would have um, faced the same kind of challenges from the people but then uh, among all uh, mix of all these challenges we see as a leader how paul supports and backs timothy and titus so what we learn from these uh, uh, these letters are not to give up we will face challenges uh, in our leadership not to give up how we can overcome those challenges how we can overcome those fear uh, as we pioneer as we lead a church as we lead our ministry um, yes we will grow we need to hold on to jesus we need to hold on and see uh, a leader like paul to whom we can be accountable to so that they can mentor us they can nurture us because i'm sure as they grew in the ministry they would have faced uh, some maybe a similar situation that we would face or they would have crossed all that okay so they can give us an input from their experience how to overcome the situation so this is how that we see how paul nurtured Timothy and Titus and made them to be a strong leader and uh, gave them the opportunity so yes two things we can learn from this is as how paul created an opportunity for these young leaders we can also create some opportunities for the young upcoming leaders in our church okay one is that second as a leader we should also have somebody to whom we can be accountable to with whom we can share our challenges and learn from their experience and among all let's look up to jesus let let's look up to god and ask god to nurture us help us to be that example in our leadership groom us help us to build that character that is needed to lead a church lead a ministry um yes this is something that we need to ask god and hold on to him only by his grace and his mercy that we can build ourselves because it is not one time it is a process uh, character is something that can be developed in each of us and it is a process that we can move further so with that we end this letter it is a short letter we end this letter if there's any question please go ahead if not we can end this class with a word of prayer is there anyone would like to share or ask any question or share from your experience anything Okay I see no questions can I request Roslyn if you can end the session with a word of prayer Oh brother Isaac can you end the session with a word of prayer Okay let us pray Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to glorify you, your name, for giving us the opportunity to learn your word. We want to bless your name for our tutors, 
I want to always ask that you empower them so that they can enlighten us. Father, I want to thank you for everything that you are doing. We pray that your word takes it in our heart and it will be our fruit. It will be an example of good leaders or good teachers to those yes. whose life we have to touch. This and all other masses we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. you Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother, for that wonderful prayer. God bless. Have a great day. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. God bless.